Hey, how's it going, mates? This is me, John Kazmarski, and I'm talking a little bit about how would you define home and minimalism and productivity and homelessness. But the main crux of this is how would you define home? I've got my coffee mug here. It says Moga Ton in it, which is Korean for cup. Now, I've experimented with a lot of different languages. I like language. I love language. But me encanta el idioma de español. I love the Spanish language and, of course, the English language. So I'm working on being bilingual in the Spanish and the English. I'm fully fluent in English, but uh, I would like to mejorar mi español. I would like to improve my Spanish. <clears throat> so I've been homeless a few times in my life but I never felt shut out by fellow humans. God and humans were always there pulling for me. Now that's really true. Like I've been, I'm gonna put on a little bit of music here. This is Brahms's fourth symphony, third movement. I really like that music. I gotta listen to the ad for a stereo Guess what I just got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. So I felt that God and fellow humans, more importantly, were always there pulling for me. I'll give a couple of examples of this. First off, I was homeless in France in 2010. Good, this is Brahms's Fourth Symphony, Third Movement. I love classical music. I love classical music. So, uh, in France in 2010, I uh, was homeless. I didn't have a place to stay. I couldn't afford a place to stay. So I, I remember staying at the Charles de Gaulle airport for four, for five nights in a row, just sort of wandering around uh, with my bags. I had a big rucksack, backpack. Um, I've got a backpack now for travel, but it was a different backpack then. And I just sat in chairs and at night and sort of slept a couple hours and everybody must have thought I was waiting for somebody on a plane or waiting for my next flight, even though I didn't have one scheduled. Um, so I was able to sort of blend into the commotion of an airport and nobody thought I was homeless there. I never asked anybody for money. I never had parents or anything. And uh, the Bordeaux, I went to Bordeaux and Saint Jean de Luz on the uh, east, the west coast of France, in 2010. And in Bordeaux, I did the same thing in train stations. I sort of just hung out at train stations. And everybody thought there I was just waiting for a train. So nobody bothered me. But eventually, in France, I found a very rundown hotel called Hotel de France. It was, uh, it, was, it was close to Gare du Nord, Gare du Est, in Paris. And uh, they sort of took me in. They, sh they gave me a room. And I think they understood that I was in a bit of a plight financially and with home. So I paid them rent as often as I could, but they were sort of lenient about paying rent. I didn't pay rent every night there. So I, I felt some camaraderie, some relationship, some affection, some compassion there. And that was really touching. Um, Paris is a filthy city. It's revolting at times, but um, I have a lot of respect for France and Parisians, and I'm grateful that they that somebody ended up caring for me there, which is great. You know, the story out of that is eventually I got in touch with my parents and I took a flight back to Chicago where I'm from originally and ended up back in the States where I'm from. Originally, I'm an American citizen. Born January 7th, 1984 at 11.08 p.m. in Chicago. Now, <clears throat> in Australia, right before France in 2010, I've been to Australia twice. The first one was sort of like a reconnaissance, scouting out mission just to check the place out and to meet a friend I met in a video game. But the second time, I really wanted to live there. 
and uh, for two months I lived in a tent in the wilderness in the bush in an area of nature that no other human had ever as far as I know has ever come across or will come across it was just untouched by humans and I it got a machete and I cleared out a, a place in the in the nature for my tent and I relocated my tent three times until I found this great sturdy tree because I was near some trees that in the wind I was afraid that some of the trees were going to fall in my tent and um, I found a, a good spot there in the east coast island off of Australia. I had a beautiful view of the uh, Pacific and it was a uh, great great time. I just read books and I, I walked about three to four miles to get groceries at a local grocery store and uh, for plumbing I dug holes and covered up my poop with dirt and uh, I never left a scrap of refuse there in the wilderness at all. I uh, deposited into neighbor garbage cans um, every once in a while, but I collected all my garbage. I left the nature untouched as much as possible. I did have a visitor though. I had a monitor lizard about two feet long that would cross my path, cross my campsite, on a rate, fairly regular basis, he had some kind of commute that this lizard was going to. He commuted to work and went back to work. He had a sense of home. And uh, one day I saw him digging up my poop and eating it. It was revolting. But uh, he wasn't the cleanliest. He wasn't the cleanest lizard, that's for sure. But he was a friend that visited me um, when I was living in the bush in Australia. Now, that was more of a shelter than a home. Because I think a home has many more qualities in it that are necessary for a home to truly feel like a home. I've heard the phrase, home is where the heart is, and I think that's really true. For a while I thought my heart was in Australia, but I think, you know, my heart is in me. Whoever I am, I can turn that into a home. And right now I'm grateful to be in America, and I'm very patriotic about that. Now, in the States, I stayed in a lot of my parents' homes. My parents are fairly, I don't, I'm not wealthy myself. But my parents are incredibly intelligent and amazing people, and they are wealthy. And they, they have a couple of estates uh, in the States, in the United States. And I've had the opportunity of staying at those places with them and alone. So I've had this really unique upbringing where I've experienced being in not mansions, but an estate and a house, a big house, all alone with a, with a pet, uh, usually, with a cat, uh, or them paying for a place from staying in an apartment. And so now I support myself. I've got my own place and I have my own job and all that stuff, for which I'm incredibly grateful for. That started at 31 when I got my own place. It took me a while. Um, and I lived out of the car in Venice in California and West Hollywood in California. And I remember waking up one night after sleeping in the car in either the West Hollywood or Venice. No, it would have been the West Hollywood ish area in North Hollywood. And uh, some woman came out of her house, her actual abode, and saw me in the car. And she was talking to some friends. She was like, Oh, a neighbor. She wasn't surprised or shocked or flabbergasted at all about um, the fact that I'd been sleeping in the car because she didn't want to call the police. She was like, oh, a neighbor. So that was interesting that they sort of were welcoming like that. So I, I guess this theme is that this evolving theme is that humans sort of look out for other humans. Now, back in the caveman days, a, a, a barbaric human, a, a Neanderthal or, or sorts from which we are descended would go out and hunt and gather and bring food back to his cave with his family. And that is a part of home. Now I always looked and felt looked out for by a fellow man at other times. I felt betrayed by humans, but now I know what to be grateful for. 
And that's these simple things like going to work, leaving home is part of being at home. It's part of creating the sense of home. And that is essential to home, I think, from, just from my personal experiences. If I don't have a, if I don't hunt and gather, I, I, I'm a pescatarian. I eat fish, fruits, vegetables, and a lot of polvos, powders. Polvos is powders in, in Espanol because I like being an astronaut. And astronauts eat a lot of powders. <clears throat> so I have powders every morning of uh, protein powder, uh, super greens powder, emergency, vitamin C powder, etc. That's a digression. That's nutrition. Um, so going to work is a vital part of home. Now, did Henry David Thoreau have a home when he lived on Walden Pond? The great American author, Henry David Thoreau, he did have a home. He made that simple cabin that he built and that he calculated the expenses for his home. He had visitors there. He had poets. He had people that visited him. He, he went on walks. He observed the Walden Pond in the winter. He did have a home there. Now, what about Bear Grylls? Bear Grylls is a British survivalist. Bear Grylls makes shelters when he's doing his Man vs. Wild shows or whatever. He, those aren't homes, though. He has no job to go to. He doesn't have friends. He has, apparently, Bear Grylls lived on, lives on the Thames in London or in Britain somewhere. He, he has a boat that's his home with his family. But when he's doing his shows, he makes shelters. Now, a shelter is different from a home. And work, returning to home from work, is paramount and incredibly crucial part of feeling at home and being at home. Of course, there's gas, electric, water, those essentials that are pivotal to creating a, a shelter home. But for me, as a serious minimalist, in my book, Don't Cope, Exonerate Yourself from Clutter, Serious Minimalism, I have these eight principles, uh, and one of them is so, everything must have precise coordinates and finite receptacles. Precise receptacles and finite coordinates. So that means that everything has its place, everything has its spot. If you want to see my kitchen, I did a video about my labeled kitchen where all the spices, the especias, polvos, powders. Uh, arroz y frijoles, rice and beans, bebidos, drinks, all that's labeled and organized. Everything has the exact same, the right spot, the right coordinates. That's essential for me to have a, an organized home and for home to feel like a home. If everything has the right spot and you know when you're in the right spot when you're home. Because I've traveled so much and was seeking the home for so long. And home definitely is people as well. It's having, for right now, I'm a, I live in a two-person home. Myself, a homo sapien, and a fetus cat's companion, Bianchi, my cat Bianchi. Bianchi, baby! She just meowed. I don't know where she is. She's around here somewhere. But um, you have to be selective about what you let into your home. I remember when I was living in a cottage in an incredibly small town in, in uh, Michigan, in the United States, I wanted to treat my door like a customs bureau of only allowing certain things into my home. And I think that's really crucial. You don't want clutter in your home. It's hard to get rid of clutter. And I pray every day. Uh, I could talk a little bit about religion, but I won't too much. That's a bit of a digression. But I do pray every day that I walk out clutter from my mind, my body, and my home. And I will digress a little bit into religion, but not too much, because I've focused a little bit too much on religion in the past. I was an atheist for about seven years, wasn't too happy, like exploring a teeny bit with the compassion and emphasis of Christianity, but mainly Buddhism and Taoism are like those reasons, because they cause you to think. But there is a lot of veracity with atheism as well. Um, 
But that's just personal truths, and this is about home. So, I just wanted to share that. One other principle from my book is that you should only have agenda-based items in your home. After being selected for everything requires maintenance, you gotta fix it, you gotta repair it, you gotta find a place to store it. There's all these things you have to do with things, with cosas, with things in your home. So it's good to have only things that are utilized and based on your agenda. And that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to identify what you really want to do and what you really want to focus on. And it's just vital for people to have a great sense of home with friends and neighbors. I love my neighbors now. I love my home right now. I'm currently in uh, Niles, Michigan, United States, and they say opposites attract. I've traveled the world, and most people here haven't left a 50-mile radius of where they were born, and so I sort of feel like an outsider, but I like it. It's uh, become home to me. And my home may change in the future. But right now, I'm grateful to have a sense of home. I love my family. I'm grateful for my family. I had such intelligent parents. I, they're still alive, fortunately. And I love my brothers and I love my neighbors and friends. And it's been great. So, amo la vida al máximo. Woo, yes, awesome. I love life to the fullest. And thank you for watching.